Welcome back. This is another session from English 1102. In this session, we're going to cover four poems from the Characters and Relationships module. The four poems are The Promise by Sharon Olds, Failing and Flying by Jack Gilbert, Buying Stock by Denise Duhamel, and Marx by Linda Paston. Uh, if you're following along with the syllabus, this is from the same block as The Lady with the Little Dog, the characters and relationships that on the original syllabus it goes with Chekhov's Lady with the Little Dog. Again, this is The Promise by Sharon Olds, Failing and Flying by Jack Gilbert, Buying Stock by Denise Duhamel, and Marks by Linda Paston. So let's get into those four, and I will try as we go to point out any concepts or terms that will be useful for the exams um, as we go through the poems. The first of these four is The Promise by Sharon Olds. You can see Sharon Olds there, um, one of the most famous living poets in the United States. Um, we've already covered a couple of her poems this semester, like 3510. Um, this is a poem, though, that is often students struggle to understand what's going on. Um, I think in part because of the way that she jumps between... The setting, the basic setting in this poem, which is this restaurant where this couple is at having dinner, having drinks, talking about their future, um, and she jumps to the deeper meaning of this poem, the second level meaning, which is this sort of promise that the couple has made to each other about if they should become terminally ill or incapacitated or something like that. She starts off with that basic first level stuff with the second drink at the restaurant. You got a couple at a restaurant, they're having drinks, they're holding hands on the bare table. We are at it again, renewing our promise to kill each other. Okay, now you've got the second level because you've got not only what the poem is about, the setting and the basic setting of the poem is a couple at the restaurant, but this conversation that they're having and that's what the poem jumps to. You are drinking gin, night blue juniper berry dissolving in your body I'm drinking fumé, chewing its fragrant dirt and smoke. We are taking on earth. We are part soil already. So that's what they're drinking. Um, the, the real important part here is that we are taking on earth. We are part soil already. There is this sense in this poem that what they're talking about is this aging um, and the future and what might happen in the future. Wherever we are, we are also in our bed, fitted, naked, closely along each other, half passed out after love. There's a sentiment in this poem that the reason these people are having this conversation is because they love each other. They know they're going to be together forever, so they need to trust each other with the plans that they are making for later in life and, the bat and things that might happen. Drifting back and forth across the border of consciousness, our bodies buoyant, clasped. Then we're back to the restaurant. Your hand tightens on the table. You're a little afraid I'll chicken out. The husband is, is worried that, the part, that his partner might, you know, for one reason or another, chicken out, not be, not be able to do what he wants. What he is really afraid of, what you do not want, is to lie in a hospital bed for a year after a stroke without being able to think or die. You do not want to be tied to a chair like your prim grandmother cursing. You get two different scenarios right there. The lie in a hospital bed after a stroke, being incapacitated, mentally incapacitated, on some needing some device to assist you with living, some kind of breathing machine or apparatus or something like that. Or the second scenario is the tied to a chair like your prim grandmother, to be totally incapacitated with dementia or something like that. So the stroke or some kind of dementia, just be out of your mind, something incapacitated in one way or another. Um, that's what the husband is afraid of, the partner of the speaker in this poem is afraid of. He wants to be sure that the speaker in the poem will be able to let him go in some situation like that. You jump back from that to the restaurant, the room is dim around us, ivory globes, pink curtains bound at the waist, and outside a weightless, luminous, lifted up summer twilight. And then... The speaker responds to these concerns. I tell you, you do not know me if you think I will not kill you. She says, 
you know, you don't have anything to worry about. And in fact, you don't know me if you think I don't have the strength it takes to do what you want in a, some situation like this. And then she says, think how we have floated together, eye to eye, nipple to nipple, sex to sex. She says, look, we have shared this. The mo we have been the most intimate two people can be with each other. In fact, we're not even two people anymore. We are the halves of a creature drifting up to the lip of matter and over it. And then she says, you know my courage. You, you know what I'm capable of. Because she says, you know me from the bright blood fleck delivery room. She says, look, you've seen me give birth to a child. You've seen me squeeze another person out of my body. You know what kind of strength I have. If a lion had you in its jaws, I would attack it. So she says, I would attack a lion to save you. I would do anything to save you if I could save you. But if the ropes binding your soul are your own wrists, I will cut them. She says, I would do anything to save you. I would fight a lion to save you. But if I can't save you, if I couldn't save you, I would let you go. I would um, cut the ropes binding your own soul. So she said, you get this double, the last two and a half lines, you get this double, I would do anything to save you, but if I couldn't save you, I would let you go. This, what's happening in this poem is this, um, to go back to the beginning, this renewing our promise to kill, we are at it again, renewing our promise to kill each other. What you are getting is this conversation they're having in a restaurant, which is, this sign of their deep love and affection and commitment to each other, which is that they can trust each other to make these difficult choices that might, you know, 20, 30, 40 years be in front of them. So at a basic level, this poem is about this deep commitment this couple has to each other. That is really different from Failing and Flying by Jack Gilbert, which is a poem about divorce um, and about how this this marriage that was so wonderful at a certain point and was full of all this happiness um, and full of all these wonderful things but it, the imagery in the poem is it was so wonderful it burned so bright burned so hot that it kind of burned itself out that the central idea of this poem is this was so good of course it couldn't last it had to burn itself out the idea of that is um, and this is where Icarus and if you don't know Icarus this is a Greek myth. Let's get it pulled up. Let's see if we can pull up an image. Um, Icarus and his father, Daedalus. You can see these images of Icarus here. Um, this is a Greek myth. Icarus and his father. His father is the person who invented mazes. Um, and then they were trapped on an island where his father had built a maze. Um, and in fact, you can see in this painting right here, Icarus and his father, there's his father, um, and then there's Icarus falling because his wings have melted. Um, in the original myth, uh, to get to escape the island where they're trapped and get back to the mainland, um, Icarus's father builds two sets of wings, one for each of them, and flies back to the mainland but the father says don't fly too low or the wings or the waves of the ocean will hit you knock you down don't fly too high or the sun will get hot melt your wings you'll fall into the ocean and drown because the wings are held together with beeswax in the original myth um icarus though gets excited um flies too high the wings melt he falls and drowns what this poem does is take that myth and apply it, sort of turn it into the marriage. Everyone forgets that Icarus also flew. The first sentence of the poem, he says, look, people remember that Icarus you know, got too high, crashed, drowned, but everybody forgets that before that, Icarus got to fly, that he was allowed to fly, that there was this success that came before the crash. It's the same when love comes to an end or the marriage fails. And people say they knew it was a mistake. Everybody said it would never work. And so you get this idea where he says a relationship fails, a marriage fails, and, pe and of course all the naysayers are like, people said it would never work. It, you know, it wasn't going to work out for them. Um, but that doesn't mean that what came before it wasn't good and wasn't worth doing. She was old enough to know better. But anything worth doing is worth doing badly. 
And that sentence, what you get in that line in this poem, anything worth doing is worth doing badly, is this anything worth doing is worth doing sort of wide open, wholeheartedly, throwing yourself into. And then you get what he gives you a lot of in this poem is a lot of these images of what was good before the, that came before the ending, all the good stuff. Like being there by that summer ocean on the other side of the island while love was fading out of her. The stars burning so extravagantly those nights that anyone could tell you they would never last. Well, that's one of the central ideas in this poem is this. It was too good to last. It was too wonderful. It was burning too bright. It was too great. Every morning, she was asleep in my bed like a visitation. The gentleness in her like antelope standing in the dawn mist. So he remembers... Um, the woman that he was married to, and, and they would wake up, and she would be asleep in the bed. He wakes up, she's asleep in the bed, just beautiful. Each afternoon, I watched her coming back through the hot, stony field after swimming. So he has this wonderful memory of mornings, wonderful memory of afternoons. The huge sky on the other side of that. Listen to her while we ate lunch. How can they say the marriage failed? Like the people who came back from province when it was province and said it was pretty, but the food was greasy. What you get right there is this image of some people are going to find the downside of things no matter what. Some people, you could go to the most beautiful, wonderful place in the world and somebody's going to find something to complain about. The food was greasy. I believe Icarus, the most, the most famous portion of this poem is these last two lines. I believe Icarus was not failing as he fell, but just coming to the end of his triumph. This, he had a triumph. This wonderful thing happened. Sometimes some good things don't last forever. That's what happened here. And the fact that it in the fact that it ended doesn't mean it wasn't a triumph, doesn't mean it wasn't worth doing, doesn't mean it wasn't worth doing wholeheartedly. Just some things come to an end. Not everything lasts forever. Um, that that there was this failing, but that doesn't mean there wasn't flying, and the flying was worth it. This is you set this beside the promise. This is a couple that ended up not being together forever. These, these two characters who ended up not being together forever. But the sentiment of this poem is that doesn't mean it wasn't worth doing. And then there's a much, very simple, short poem here by Linda Paston called Marx. Um, this, much like The Promise by Sharon Olds, is about um, you get not just a couple but a family here. But this is about this mom and wife who is sort of fed up. Um, the marks in the title of this poem is this old-fashioned expression for grades. You know, you feel like if this poem was updated now, the title of it would be grades. This is marks like an old Tommy report card. My husband gives me an A for last night's supper. An incomplete for my ironing, a B-plus in bed. So he's given her grades for being a wife, for being a mom, for being a partner. A, incomplete B, B plus. My son says, so now we moved away from the husband. My son says I'm an average, average mother. But if I put my mind to it, I can improve. My daughter believes in pass fail, tells me I pass. So the daughter's like, the daughter simplifies it and it's like, it's all good, you pass. Wait till they learn, I'm dropping out. And so you get this sentiment at the end of the poem that the mom is fed up with being graded like this, that she feels unappreciated or unrecognized, and she's had enough, and she's about to teach them or show them. She's not about to, like, run away to Mexico, but she, you get the sentiment that she's going to stop doing all these things that they're grading for so they can learn how valuable she is, that she's done with their grading system. And then the last one that's on the syllabus here that I want to cover is this poem, Buying Stock by Denise Duhamel. Um, Duhamel, you hear her name pronounced different ways. Um, you see her. Um, if you want some biographical information about the people on here, we talked a little about Sharon Olds. Sharon Olds is still alive. You see her there in the um, painting. She's, she's published books in the past year or so. Um, Jack Gilbert who wrote Failing and Flying, is not alive. He died. He's died in the past 10, 15 years. Um, and then Denise Duhamel is still alive. Um, 
you see there, she was born in 1961. Um, Linda Paston is also still alive. I think that, yeah, there she is right there. Um, all of them are American writers. Uh, Jack Gilbert spent a significant portion of his life living in Europe, I believe in Italy, before he passed away. But all four of these are American writers. To get back to buying stock, um, this is a poem about protection. You get that word. You have this long quote from the Surgeon General from the 1980s, Chief Medical Officer in the United States, and it has the word protection in it um, twice. The use of condoms offers substantial protection, but does not guarantee total protection, and that while there is no evidence that deep kissing has resulted in transfer of the virus, no one can say that such transmission will be absolutely impossible. So you get to the protection twice in this quote, and that is the central idea, the central theme of this poem is there is no substantial protection versus total protection. And the central idea of this poem is there is no such thing as total protection. There's no total protection physically. There's no total protection emotionally. To be alive in the world is to me is to be not totally protected ever. There's no complete safety. There's no complete promise that you can't be hurt. There's no way. The original quote, if you're not familiar with the context, has to do with the AIDS virus. What she does is take that idea of physical protection and in the last few lines of this poem sort of twist it to emotional protection or personal protection or something like that. Protection from being hurt in a relationship. I know you won't mind if I ask you to put this on. It's for your protection as well as mine, so we're back to protection. Wait, wait. Here, before we rush into anything, I bought a condom for each one, for each one of your fingers. And here, just a minute, open up. I'll help you put this one on over your tongue. So you're getting all this incre these increased layers of protection, more protection. Um, I was thinking... If we leave these two rolled, you can wear them as patches over your eyes. So now we've got even more protection. We're getting to this level of ridiculous protection. This poem is trying to be silly because what it's trying to do is show you how silly it is to try for total protection, to use the word from the quote at the beginning, because there's no such thing. Partners have been known to cry, shed tears. The known to cry, shed tears is where the poem makes that turn away from the strictly physical into intellectual or emotional or um, this poem uses the word intimacy. Intimacy doesn't, or I'm sorry, it uses the word closeness. And what it's talking about is closeness, not just physical closeness, but emotional closeness or intellectual closeness. Um, partners have been known to cry, shed tears, not because of physical intimacy, but because of emotional or intellectual bodily fluids and all this trust there you go there's the emotional the intellectual stuff all this trust and even the thought of this closeness and the closeness at the end is not just physical proximity it is emotional closeness emotional attachment that kind of thing so what this poem circles back to is that idea that does not guarantee total protection there's no way to guarantee total protection when you're close to some person when you're close to somebody, whether it's friends or more than friends or something like that, this poem gets at the idea that there's no total protection from being hurt. Somebody that, you know, you might get divorced, like in Failing and Flying, or your spouse might get fed up with everything, like the speaker in March by Linda Paston. There's no promise that somebody won't get hurt. There's, there's not some danger um, in being close or intimate with somebody or being, even being friends. So you get these four poems, the promise, which is them promising to take care of each other, though sort of in this dark way, this worst case scenario kind of way, failing and flying, which is this poem about how things didn't work out, but it was still worth doing. Buying stock, which is about being, in, being close to people and how that opens you up to being hurt. Um, and Marx by Linda Paston, which is about being close to somebody, being close to your family, your loved ones, um, but feeling unappreciated, unrecognized by them, and deciding to do something about that. To go back to where we started, uh, these four poems are part of the characters and relationships block. If you have questions about them or about some image in them, 
uh, or some concept that you want to use or talk about or write about in one of the essays, be in touch with me and I'll be happy to get back to you to work through those concerns with you. Um, otherwise, that covers these four poems as part of the Characters and Relationships module. Thank you all for your time uh, and I'll see you next time.